battlefields of the ancient Russia, some warriors could use psychic energy to divert the penetration of strikes into their body space. This ancient skill was utilized further in the 20th century. One of the special operations units, a secret group called Shadow, was trained to control the situations with the power of their mind and internal energy alone. Where physical movement or force was impossible or insufficient, these agents could generate flows of energy invisible but destructive to their opponents. They could perceive, maneuver, and control the unseen strings of human form. In this film, Vladimir Vasilyev gives you some examples of working with energy in the martial arts setting. To a greater or lesser extent, these abilities exist in every person. physical kind of work? First thing you're learning, you place your hands onto the opponent's shoulders and see how the person is rocking inside. And the inner rocking that every person has will lead uh, to external visible rocking. So let your energy flow into him. And just feel how he's rocking inside. Just softly place your hands on his shoulders and go with him. <laughs> Next uh, type of work is when you place your hands on his shoulders. And then you raise your hands a little bit and just have very light contact with the fingertips only. And you let him go down again. The next stage is when you don't place your hands on the shoulders at all because you already feel uh, the rocking movement. And then you stop him. So hands at this level, just away from the shoulders. Okay. Then you you can do this if you're good enough. You can do this a little bit like a really distance, you know, like that. It, it, it depends how you can work, you know. So then you started to work with one arm. It depends where, then you started to work for the stone. You have to like, you know, when you move towards him, you're supposed to feel like something here, because again, like around the body, uh, you know, like a certain ways, different tools. For example, first energy. Oh, energy. She has enough energy for it. Yeah. 
And you declare the future, he will sit down. So again. So again, like a student, so first work like that, right? You were supposed to feel here. The next type of work that I'd like to show involves the density of a person. Each person has his own density. The density is spread out through the whole body. Физическим аспектом я имею в виду к бою или к драке. If you apply it to a real fight, то есть можно собрать вот эту вот плотность вместе в одном месте. You can collect this density into one area. И тогда другие все места становятся пусты. And then all the other areas of the body become empty. Я ушел. Окей. Вон из автопанчи. He will tense a little bit, right? When they show the movement, he's kind of tense. Oh, like that. So, tense is here, but the other place is empty. So if I push here, it will go down very quickly. Like that, without tense. I show the movement, like that, look at that. Attaching here, and he will go down even with one finger. So it's the same, for example, like he's like a kind of grabbing me, right? And he's tense, right? Like what? Like a tense. For me, like he's tense here and also supporting is different. Right? So look at that. So again, when I start to punch him, oh, he is here. And just like that. With the finger, he falls down. So this, we talk about density. density. Again, here, and then you push here. When I touch him towards the face, here, with this moment here, and he can felt very easily. Okay, next work. Uh, this is called uh, Pozvalinia. Permission. Permission. Uh, it means when you give a opponent to do anything where you want, at the same time, you, you know, like, uh, for example, we wrestle, right? He start to grab me or this and that. It means I give him too much support. Grab, grab you like that. But if this support disappears, it's hard for him to, uh, you know, like, find support. So he will lose. Yeah. So he, he start to grab. And I just work with him. Wait. 
So again, when you die, when you, you know, work, you know, so you're using his body to escape. Bigger or and stronger, and again he starts to grab. Yeah, he puts him down. Right? There's a connection between the physical and the energy work. And the next type of work I'd like to show is uh, the final stage of this kind of work. This is self-defense or work with uh, no physical contact. Okay, so uh, how is it? When you feel it, человека и как бы его вытаскиваете по ниточке по лучку который из него исходит in this case you feel the opponent and you feel sort of the uh, threads uh, the strings that are coming off from him and you pull those strings okay. 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 So you punch, right? okay. you take something and
students who will try to explain what they feel. Uh, uh, as you're um, going to make a movement on Vladimir, whether it's a kick or a punch, uh, you feel in control of the situation for the first few seconds, and then suddenly everything is taken away from you, and you're left with nothingness. And uh, it probably does have to do with the energy that's there. And Vladimir does take it away, so that would explain it most efficiently. There definitely is an outside influence happening. You might initially feel a bit of fear, not fear from uh, the instructor, from the opponent, fear that your own ability hasn't worked. And that fear coupled with another influence, which I can't really explain, is causing you to react in such a way whether you fall or you're drawn towards another position. That's uh, in a nutshell how I can describe it. When Andre and I are working together against Vladimir, um, we, uh, our, our movements are, are in control for the first few seconds and then it's suddenly it's taking o been taken over afterwards and uh, we had to move at the pace we were going at uh, because if we moved a lot quicker we would wind up, wind up uh, hitting each other a little too hard because uh, Vladimir redirects the force from our punch and right, he redirects it right into each other so it's, it's quite, uh, quite lethal. So you can imagine the application with weapons or with uh, something you're carrying uh, briefcase, uh, umbrella, stuff like that, the same, uh, I guess, theory would apply. I mean, if we were actually moving at that lethal speed, say, with a knife, with two attackers, the same type of misdirection of our bodies could be applied and becomes very realistic.
The development of your psychic energy happens through expanding on numerous human abilities and through specialized training. One aspect is physical exercises. Psychic energy is invisible to an untrained person but is a truly powerful force. It can be generated, felt, and controlled. It can be used in any confrontation, for healing, or for obtaining knowledge and information. An individual occupies a much greater volume of space than his physical body. The existence of the energy fields surrounding living organisms was known to mankind for thousands of years. The influence of these energy fields has been utilized by people of many religions and occupations for various purposes. A person consists of several bodies enclosed in one another. Each one of them has the energy field that takes up a body space and is expressed in the lines of power and emanations. Each one of these bodies can be sensed and manipulated on a different level of internal processing. Breathing exercises is another way of accumulating energy. It involves breathing of various rhythms and depths, breathing through different parts of the body, breathing combined with physical exercises, and breathing for healing of oneself and others. Other methods of accumulating energy are warm-ups for the hands, energy shaping and transpositions with your hands and palms. In combat, psychic energy can add true power to your strikes, to your work with pressure points, can create protective shield and, for example, protect your fingers from breaking. The goal of training is to make your hands and mind equally skillful and sensitive to the energy components. In the martial arts setting, it is especially important to be able to replace one with the other. Finger exercises prepare for diagnosing, identifying objects, colors, chemical composition. These exercises can be done in the dark, or while you're blindfolded. There are exercises to move the energy flows within your body and certain patterns of hand movements or passes that can even out and reshape the energy fields. You can identify the margins of the energy fields and manipulate them using the power of your mind and directing your energy flows. This way you can indirectly move or affect the physical body. You can identify diseases or traumatized areas of the body, even old injuries or future illnesses that already exist in the energy fields but have not yet materialized in the physical organs. At this stage, the illness can be removed easier with the energy healing. Yet other ways of unfolding your energy reserves are through relaxation, concentration, and development of your visual spatial orientation. Certain lifestyle changes can be very helpful. Fasting, cold water immersions, and the right attitudes and spiritual orientations in life. I'll put the word for, um, the word without contact. 